Hi, my name is Harold Fletcher, and I, uh, I guess I want to talk a little bit about my work, but at the moment I'm in Minnesota, and I'm from the Bay Area, and my work, what exists still, most of it is somewhat temporary, is back there. So I only have a, a few slides, I'm in the middle of working on a project here, but nothing's really done. So I'm going to show a few slides of some, some past projects that I worked on. Um, I've, been, I've been working with various communities for about seven years, both, both people and sites in general areas. Um, so I'm going to... I'll show a few of those things. This is an image from a show called Garage Sale, where I got a vacant store in a neighborhood and turned it into a gallery, and then got people who were having garage sales to have their entire garage sale displayed in the store slash gallery. Um, so this is one family's garage sale. Each member of the household would go through and describe the object and why they were getting rid of it. And then those stories would be put onto tags that would be attached to the object. So as you went through the entire show, you kind of got a sense of the family um, through the things they were getting rid of. Each show was up for one week, and then the family would come in on the weekend and sell off the objects like a normal garage sale. This is an image from another show that was done in the city of Richmond in the Bay Area. And the gallery was located in the Civic Center complex where all of the other city offices were, the Health and Human Services and the Mayor's Office and the Police Department and all of those things. And the entire show was about the 300 people who worked in that place, the Civic Center complex. So on that back wall are photographs or, I'm um, sorry, are portraits of, of the 300 employees that work there. This is a picture of me taking a picture of a city employee with another employee helping out by holding the backdrop. So first off, all of the employees were photographed, and then a free class was offered with um, ranging from 5-year-old kids to 85-year-old senior citizens, all with the idea that they were learning, we're going to learn how to draw, but the only hitch was that they had to draw city employees. This is a detail of some of the portraits that were drawn for that particular piece. After that piece was done, I went back in and borrowed objects from the, the office workers' cubicle spaces. So there were their family portraits, desktop objects, office, office cartoons about office life, and uh, office plants on pedestals. Trophies with, uh, in this case, cubicle walls. Coffee cups with uh, funny sayings on them. A video projection with um, landscape calendar images that gave a sense of flying through the landscapes. And this is, this is one of the office workers, oops, one of the uh, office workers with his portrait reintegrated back into his office environment after the show came down. The show was really very effective in bringing in people from the Civic Center who never went to see the shows in the gallery before. This was a piece that was done in Fairfield, California, just, um, called Some People from Around Here, and there were um, portraits done on plywood of people who lived or worked right in that area in, in Fairfield. And it was mounted on a high I-80 so that commuters would see real people who lived in that town as they drove by. It's all over. Supposedly a million people a week saw, this, saw these pieces as they drove by. This is an image from a piece that was done at a gallery in San Francisco. The piece um, 
function in a couple of different ways. Um, in the community surrounding the gallery, I got five different local residents to agree to grow a crop, either in their backyard or on a window, um, in a windowsill or on their rooftop, and then to share the crop once it was ready to harvest with the other five people, other four people. Um, and then in the gallery itself, I built a greenhouse and grew my own crop of greens, which was also distributed to those people. Um, along with that was a, a newsletter that talked about the people themselves and the, the food that they were growing. Sort of trying to create a system that people would learn about each other who lived in their neighborhood, learn about the people who lived in their own neighborhood through uh, sharing food. At a gallery in Seattle, I did a, a show called Boy that focused just on one boy, one ten-year-old boy, this, this kid here, Gregory Smart. And what I did was rigged up a video camera on a helmet that he could wear so that he would videotape things in his everyday life. Here he is uh, reading a book. Then the, um, the material that was shot off of his head camera was edited and projected on six video projectors in a gallery space. The idea was that it would give you the impression of what it was like to be inside a ten-year-old boy's head looking out at the world, observing the things that he was interested in. This is an image from a piece that was done for the Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco. I set up a, a camera stand in the museum lobby, and as visitors would come through after they bought their ticket, I would ask to see photographs they kept in their wallets. Then I re-photographed those, and in six hours got 150 photographs. From those 150 photographs, 10 were selected, blown up fairly big, and then um, framed and included in the museum's collection. They're actually going to be shown in the museum in July. The idea was to create a sort of reciprocal relationship between the visitors and the museum so that as the visitors came to see the art in the museum, they were really just coming to see something that they'd already brought with them. If not them specifically, then it would be something that they could identify with from their everyday lives. There was a show at um, the de Young Museum in San Francisco in which 14 artists were asked to do pieces about the museum itself, to use the museum as its source. In front of the museum there's a pond that everyone has to walk by to get into the museum. I thought it would be interesting to make an underwater video in that pond. So this is a shot of me wearing waders with an aquarium, with a video camera in the aquarium, submerging the aquarium part way and then shooting under the water. The resulting images were shown on video projectors in the museum itself, and this is some still shots from, from those images, from those videos. It turned out that under the water was a really different view and that it was actually very beautiful. In some ways this, this piece kind of epitomizes my approach, which is to go into a place and find the inherent beauty or culture that exists there, um, rather than imposing my own sense of what that should be, to just look and, and find out what's already there and uncover it, make it visible so that people can, can see it. This is a shot from a video installation that I did recently with um, David Jarvie, who's the person in the foreground on the left. He has Down syndrome and works at an art center in San Francisco called Creativity Explored. He um, explains his Down syndrome through a Star Trek episode, and so I uh, put him into that episode for this video installation. He claims that these telosions damaged him and that's what it caused his Down syndrome, but that also they can create the illusion of being normal again, so he needed to return to Talos IV. So digitally I sort of gave him that opportunity, which he really loved seeing. Another, another artist, Chris Johansson, came along with David on his journey back to Talos IV. This was all shot on a blue screen and then they were superimposed into the, into the life footage of, uh, of the Star Trek episode. One of the projects I'm working currently is at this building here, 
which is a corporation outside of St. Paul called Fortis. And I've been um, given a grant to be kind of an artist in residence at this corporation. This is Trudy. She has her cubicle next to mine. I actually have a cubicle there in the corporation. And I'm uh, over a four month period developing a series of projects that work with the employees there at the company to uh, once again sort of draw out the, uh, the culture that exists there. Oops. Uh, I guess that's all for now. I'll look forward to talking more about my work and, and the future projects there in Kentucky once I get there.